Hey there. It is so magical where I live. I don't know if you could hear the birds. There's white squirrels here. The area that I'm in, uh, Brevard, North Carolina, is kind of known for that. And I uh, have a little white squirrel friend now back here and a little groundhog. And the birds are unbelievable. Um, this morning, the hummingbird came to visit me. We have a beautiful cardinal. There's a bird uh, feeder, and I don't think it's been used in a while in terms of like actually putting seed or, or bird food in there. So I'm gonna start feeding the birds, but this is just a magical time of night here. Um, I love the little porch off of my bedroom. This is my home away from home. But I, you know, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, kids, what I see happening in the world, working with kids again, um, being more entrenched in experiential education, getting the kids out in the wilderness. Uh, most people know that I'm wildly passionate about this. You know, it's kind of funny. I was, um, when I worked in the counseling center at Ocean County College, we would sit in meetings and we would talk about the mental health crisis and how the youth are so stressed out and how much times have changed. And I would constantly talk about how kids need to be entrenched in the wild, in the wilderness, outside in nature and um, healing trauma somatically um, through movement and, and breath work and you know, creating a lot of awareness and conscious intention and then coupling that with nature-based play and adventures is just so wildly effective and how this is more of what we should be incorporating as mental health practitioners. And that I was really disappointed, honestly, in the trends in the mental health field and I think the DSM-5 is crap. Um, and I had to take a whole class while I was pursuing my master's on pharmaceuticals. That was like the whole class. Um, a lot of people know how I feel about these meds. I don't think they're helpful. I don't think they should be the first go-to. Um, I'm not gonna get into, there's a ton of science and data behind how I feel. This isn't just a feeling-based thing. This is actually a, a researched um, conclusion that I've come to. And you can, you know, listen to Dr. Kelly Brogan talk about this, who's a holistic psychiatrist, Dr. Eamon, one of the most renowned brain specialist psychiatrists, constantly talking about how he really does not believe in going to medicine as the first um, force of combating the mental health crisis. And so, um, a lot of you know that my daughter, my oldest daughter, had a lot of challenges. And what was really interesting is during the height of her crisis, um, we were referred to Gensite in Brick, New Jersey, which I come to find out uh, three quarters of her high school was referred there. And I kid you not, the psychiatrist, and I actually really liked him. He was French. He was literally from France um, and they brought him over to the States um, so he had a more balanced take on psychiatry because he was a big advocate of diet and um, moving your body and breath work and more somatic practices coupled with pharmaceuticals but he put my daughter on a vitamin regimen and fish oil and all the things that I was trying to convince her to take and of course you know kids always need to hear from somebody else nine out of ten times and uh, so he was advocating for a lot of things that I was advocating for which was so so helpful um, but uh he was, you know, also pushing pharmaceuticals and I mean, he prescribed like three different meds for her 
And so when I had an emergency meeting with the high school counselors, one of them confided in me that 15 students, and I believe a high majority of those students were in my daughter's grade, were also referred to GenPsych and prescribed the same three pharmaceuticals and had the same three to four diagnosis as my daughter. And the reason why this made me lose my marbles is because how could all of these kids have the same diagnosis and how could they all be prescribed the same meds? Because we're all bio individuals. Our physiology is quite unique. How could this be plausible? Right? I mean, it just didn't make sense to me. And we know that the pharmaceutical company drives in billions of dollars. I mean, it's a business. You know, it's a lot about the black and white at the end of the day. Um, very, very money driven, greedy um, way to try to heal people, in my not so humble opinion. And so I would talk about this very openly in meetings. Um, I'm halfway through my master's degree. I'm 30 credits into a 60 credit program. I have a 4.0. I busted my ass as a single mom, working multiple jobs, running a business, raising two kids. And the reason why I have absolutely no inspiration, motivation, or desire to continue is because I'd probably get my license taken away from me. Um, because my ideas about things are so drastically different. And so being a wilderness hiking guide and having the kids out in the wild and leading them on hikes and, you know, I've actually written a curriculum for, for this program um, for my own, for me. I have talked to them about um, incorporating the curriculum but I did it for me because I was really disappointed that there was no curriculum. So I'm actually teaching these kids survival skills and how to read the trailhead marker. You know, a lot of these kids don't know what blazes are. Um, they don't know just certain life saving skills that if they were ever out in the wilderness with their family hiking and they got lost, you know, how do they find their way back? What are things that they could do? How can you help them to not panic so that they're not going into their primal brain and they stay in their executive functioning brain? You know, if you follow the trends on, on uh, I have a lot of friends that do search and rescue out in these areas now for search and rescue, usually rescuing hikers. And they'll tell you most people who are either found dead, which is tragic, or lost are very close to the trail. And you just get so frazzled that you lose executive functioning. And so um, I'm trying to incorporate all of my knowledge through my, my WUFA training, my wilderness um, first, first aid, wilderness and remote first aid training. And I took an eight hour survival 101 training. I took an online training from a medical doctor. So I really diversified uh, training under my belt at this point. And um, I'm really trying to help these kids garnish vital, important life skills because it's very common for a kid to wander from, from the pack, the group that they're with and, and you know, get lost. Um, and a lot of these kids didn't even know what a blaze was or how to read the trailhead marker or, you know, anything basic like that. So I talked to them about what's essential to bring with you hiking and um, you know, following the sounds of water or the sounds of cars so that you can flag for help or water moves down the mountain. So you're more than likely to follow the sounds of water and then find a trailhead or at least get yourself to the bottom of the mountain if you happen to get lost higher up in elevation. So just basic things like that, you know, um, wearing bright colors and I have like old bandanas that if I ever needed to shred them and mark trees so that I could mark my path, you know, if a ranger had to come and, and try to find me if I was lost. Um, so just basic stuff that I think is so vital. So for me, it's not just hiking, um, it's education, but I always say to them like, what do you think the benefits of hiking are? Um, and I'm so surprised all of them say fitness, exercise, workout, you know, strength, endurance, stamina. 
And then I'm like, what about the heart? What about the mind? What about the emotional, mental? What about the spirit and the soul? And it's really interesting. So part of why I wanted to talk about this is because it's so much in how you're raised. And I understand like if you're, if you're a city person and you're being sent to camp out in the mountains and this is such severe contrast for this child, they're not gonna know any better. Their parents probably don't know any better. Um, you know, it's like New York City and the Smoky Mountains, like two totally different things, right? I get that. But it's amazing how it's all in how you're raised because the kids from Asheville, if you know anything about Asheville, beyond the reputation of being like hippy dippy and whatever, you know, it's very mountainous and it's super outdoorsy. It actually reminds me of Brevard where I live, but like smaller. Um, smaller encapsulated kind of energy of Asheville here and I had this girl from Asheville on the hike today and she was the first person to be like it's so good for your heart and your mind and what it does for your emotions and it just makes you happy and if I have a bad day and I go out on the trails and I'm out in nature I feel better and she even equated it to like music and what music does for you and her dad's like into foraging and they're out on the trails all the time and she was talking about all the wildlife and how connected her family is to nature and how it was like yes 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 um but i used to sit in meetings at the counseling center and be like we have this all wrong and i'm just so beyond stoked and just over the moon about the fact that I'm here now really like doing it doing the things that I said like getting the kids outside getting the kids out in the wilderness teaching them these skills um it's amazing when we voice things out loud I really think that we can bring things to life I do believe that we are that powerful through the grace of God you know like who am I right I'm just a small speck um but, you know, there's, there's this higher power that drives me. I really, I understand innately that my gifts and my talents are given to me from something much more powerful than me. But I think that we're also given that, you know, internal locus of control and that, that self-empowerment and that ability to voice things and bring things to life and... It's just been such a blessing. It's not perfect. Um, there are some things that I've kind of temper fitted about to be quite frank about this program. Um, but that's just because I'm, I'm widely opinionated. I mean, that's not a secret. I have strong likes and dislikes. I have strong feelings about things. Um, I can be a very black and white thinker, but honestly that level of stubbornness and that black and white thinking has saved me sometimes from making really bad decisions. Um, and I know how to find the gray area for sure. Um, but I think sometimes standing your ground or coming from that place of bold impulsivity is, uh, can be really beneficial. You know, you can sprinkle in some discretion in there, but um, I've been really adamant about this. It's why I left the classroom um, I'm just such a big fan of experiential learning and and letting kids be a little bit more self-directed. Um, so the camp that I'm working for, I really love it, um, but I do see some pitfalls. And um, they've really gone soft from, from what I've been told. Uh, they don't really allow the kids to take a lot of risks. They, they've pulled back a lot of things that I think are so essential for kids. Um, mind body soul spirit you know like they're not allowed to climb rocks and there's a waterfall that you're allowed to like climb down some rocks and go behind the waterfall and they're not allowed to do that anymore and when we go to dupont they can't swim and you see all these all these other campers swimming with like lifeguards and it's like why are our kids not able to do that so i feel like they're a little bit held back from really really experiencing some of the more powerful aspects of nature but um, I had to learn to accept this summer and be content with just having them on the trails, which I think is just such a blessing. But um, I get really, really excited. I've had some amazing groups of kids this week. 
who've been so proud of themselves. I, I'm really pushing them. I, uh, they've let me, another one of my complaints was that they were limiting me to trails. The trails were too easy. The kids weren't being challenged. They've given me gratis to um, take the kids on some longer, harder hikes. And these kids are so proud of themselves. They might whine and complain. I keep telling them they're meant to do hard things. Some of them hate hiking. And then we get done the hike and they're like, I loved that. You know, that was great. I feel so good about myself. I feel so accomplished and I'm just so proud of them. Um, and they're like, oh, I was so tired, but now I feel so good and I feel so much better. And I think this has been a really powerful experience for me um, and for them. And beyond working with the kids, I meet in counselors. Some of them are from all over the world. I have had three boys from Ireland, one from Scotland, a couple from England, a girl from England, a girl from Brazil. Um, I had one girl in my group from Italy today, uh, the northern part of Italy. And I love getting to know these counselors, getting to know their story. Um, a lot of our counselors happen to be from Louisiana and Florida. Um, and so just learning about where they live and a lot of them are in college and what they're studying and it's just been really great. I mean, this is the future of America. I don't take this lightly when I work with this population of people. You know, I love my senior um, warriors, those wise elders, because they bring so much to the table encoded with that uh, really resilient, strong disposition, that grit. And then you have these kids who I think are showing us another way of being and doing. Um, and I don't want to sit here and say that we're absolutely failing them, but I think that we could do better. Um, I talk to them a lot because these kids are not allowed to have technology in hand. And I talk to them a lot about They've been really the first generation of kids born with tech in hand. And I tell them about what life was like for me and some of you watching us and how I really believe that this is detrimental to their, their mental and emotional well-being. And I'll have to be honest with you, a lot of them agree with me. And so maybe when they become parents, they'll be a little bit more mindful because working in a restaurant, I'm seeing one-year-old kids with a cell phone in front of them and a video on. Um, so we're really losing the art of self-soothing, self-directing, uh, being in our imagination, learning how to occupy ourselves, um, or just distracting kids in the old school way of like storytelling, um, you know, redirection in more natural ways, you know, taking the child out of the restaurant and just walking around, taking a walk, whatever. Um, so it's nice to hear that a lot of these kids see it. And, um, you know, today I had just such a great experience taking the kids in DuPont. I had them do the full loop this time. So if you know anything about DuPont, um, it is a forest. And the incline up Triple Falls is a, it's a hundred foot elevation gain. And that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's quick. <laughs> it's like in two minutes, you're, you're doing a hundred feet. So it's just up, 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 up. And then I bring them to the stairs and we walk down the stairs to see the falls. And then we have to go back up the stairs. So that's more elevation. And then there's a bit of an elevation game gain through the, the high falls loop. And, um, like I said, there were some whining and complaining, but they did it and they did an amazing job. And it wasn't even two and a half miles finished to start. But they were so proud of themselves. I think they did about 400 in elevation today, 350, 400, somewhere around there. Um, the other day I got kids up to 700 feet and that was a pretty quick gain. And it was a four mile hike. Um, and again, they were girls. And they were, they felt like rock stars. They felt like, like the one girl was like, I feel like I could conquer the world right now. So I think that there's something to be said 
for getting the kids outside. We hike in the rain, we hike in the cold, we hike in the heat, building that inner resilience. You know, rain or shine, we are out there, we're doing it. And listen, I'm an adult. Hiking in intense rain is not the most joyous experience for me, but even I feel like I'm really glad that we did that. Um, you know, because it forces me out of my comfort zone and it's getting really hot now. <laughs> so we're dripping by the end of these hikes, but um, I'm just really proud of these kids. I'm so happy that I'm in a spot where I could do this now in my life. And, you know, I reflect back to how many conversations I had with my supervisor and my team back in the counseling center of how passionate I was about this and how someday this is what I'm gonna do. And uh, it's only been two years and it's happening. So, you know, words are powerful. I think we can speak things into existence. Again, I think that comes from something well beyond our own capabilities and power. But I do think that we have that intrinsic power. And uh, if you're a parent and you're watching this, I hope that this inspires and motivates you to get your kids outside. Get them outside. Don't let the rain or the snow or the heat impact that. Let them climb. Get them into that primal movement. Um, even if it's an hour a day, get them off of tech. <laughs> you know, set a time limit on tech. Don't set a time limit on nature. Please, for the love of Jesus, <laughs> for the sake of our future, for the sake of the planet, for the sake of all of our sanity, get the kids outside.